I haven't done a feature release video in a while, and shamefully so, because Project for the Web has become better and more since the initial release in 2019. In this video, I'm sharing the latest improvements, as well as talk a bit about what's coming, uh, at least for the YouTube channel, at the end of the video. So stick around, and of course, consider subscribing and liking this video if it helped you out. It helps me a lot if you subscribe and hit that like button. All right, so export to Excel is now an option in Project for the Web. Let's see that in action. So here I have a project that I haven't touched since June, and I thought it would be fun because it has that nice little guy there saying that this is actually an untitled project. Well, obviously it's not. So it's very bare now, and if I click on the three dots, the ellipsis here, we have the option to export to Excel. It won't show much, so I'm not going to touch that just yet. Let's first create a summary and a task and some more tasks. Let's add a milestone there as well. And let's have a second summary. Let's have these as being indented as well as this one. And oh, look what I did. So I'm not actually going to have the milestone as being a summary. Um, I am going to make the summary a summary. So let's add another task. Task T three, task four. And let's have the duration in there as well. Two weeks, four weeks, milestone, uh, six weeks, three weeks, or three weeks, and another milestone. And let's have a final milestone here as well. Final milestone. That's also going to take zero days and I'm going to promote this one as being the highest level so that if I look at only the summaries it will show up as a final summary and actually I need this milestone to be underneath the summary so I'm going to make that a subtask as well. So here I have two summaries, I have some tasks, I have some milestones in there. I'm going to assign myself to the first section and because I am the owner, it automatically finds me. So let's um, have me assigned there and let's assign myself to this task as well. Now immediately what you will find is the effort and the effort remaining. And this is something that is new, newish uh, to project as well, where you can change the hours spent and then change the work days. Well, let's do this correct. I need to have no one assigned to this task. And I can say, well, this is a task that is going to take two weeks, but it has 24 hours to spend uh, and I'm going to let Eric do the 24 hours of work in those two weeks. So now it is decoupled and that decoupling takes some getting used to. It's different from project and I'll probably do another video on that uh, altogether. So let's, uh, let's also have Miriam, my wife, joining. Now let's create a new one. Uh, create and assign and as you know project for the web creates a Microsoft Office 365 group well it's probably called a Microsoft 365 group by now um, so let's have Miriam working on the second task as well so she's doing all the work as per usual so this is probably a home project um, I have some value that I want to extract into Excel, but let's also have a um, 
effort completed column in here and let's have this one be finished and that little plane popped up again very nice little feature and let's set this one to 100% uh, or 100 hours completed and let's uh, let's have a look at the board because we have different buckets uh, let's have everything on doing now and uh, future work um, and let's have okay, I'm looking into the future work and see all those red dots here or red calendars here this project actually started way in the past so we probably should do something with that as well uh, doing now and completed so yeah completed stuff doesn't show up as it shouldn't so let's go into this one uh, and let's make sure that these are actually dependent on each other right another one of those best practices and you don't see that here in this view but actually if you go to the timeline view and you will navigate to and you'll navigate to that view you'll see that it it actually shows up so we're going to correct this issue here and link them again so here we go we have our nice little schedule Let's see this in action in the Excel. So clicking on the ellipsis again, clicking on export to Excel. Let's see what it actually created. So I'll open the file and here is what I get. I only get one tab and that's the project tasks. So might not be everything in there. Um, but what I see is a general information about when it started, when it's going to finish, duration in total, as well as percentage complete and when it was exported. Very nice, very nice summary of the project here. I would have expected effort being here as well, but that might be in a future situation. Um, outline levels, very useful because then you can see what actually is a summary level or not uh, the name of the tasks who is assigned to it duration effort is in there start and finish dates are in there uh, the dependency of the different tasks that's nice uh, then the percentage complete which bucket it fills in um, and depends on so it's after is it a milestone yes no and notes so immediately I think that if you are recording that it is a milestone it would also be nice to have it record if it's a summary as well so currently that's that's not the case and one other thing that strikes me here is that it only creates a list uh, this isn't a table yet so let's format it as a table and let's have that in there from which side nine and let's have that as headers so now I can at least see what the content is of my my Excel it's basic but it works and we can create graphs from this and we can some nice little visuals that that are also mentioned in the blog by Microsoft itself so it grabs a basic version of your project and lets you share that across because the goals of this export to Excel, let's dive into that briefly because we need to be aware of why and how this is done. So for reporting purposes, so here we have two nice little visuals that you can create based on that Excel file. So there's a number of goals uh, one is for reporting, one is for sharing, then there's archiving and then there's printing. And <laughs> printing um, 
struck me as very funny because it actually tells you that it is easier for senior management to consume. Both for printing and reporting purposes, I would go for Power BI. And here we have our Power BI dashboard based on the project for the web environment. All I need to do is click on refresh. And once that goes through, you'll see that there is our untitled project. And I can actually go into uh, a task overview of that project. Here it is, tasks. Uh, so here it is, the project, untitled project, uh, tasks by bucket. Well, the buckets didn't come through. That's interesting to see. Then there's completed tasks, there's overdue tasks uh, with time frames, and there's a link to go actually visualize that uh, task. And we've mentioned that in a previous video as well. Um, and then there's a project timeline, which we can see. Okay, well, here we see that it covers until September and who is assigned to it. And there's obviously a playlist for the Gantt chart visuals as well on uh, the channel. And then finally, yeah, you have your My Work. And if I find myself here, I can see that I still have work to do on the Untitled project. And here you see the two tasks that I need to do. So yes, you can print your Excel version of the project, but why not adopt a more modern way of looking into the tools. Um, but that's just basically my point of view here. So currently sharing could also be done at, uh, on a different way. Um, so reporting, I would use Power BI. Sharing can also be done in Microsoft Teams nowadays. So navigating to a Microsoft Teams environment, and I'm going to use the browser because I'm logged into Microsoft Teams elsewhere as well. Um, but we can have a look at a team and join a team that I already know. And that's going to be from a group. And it's going to be Microsoft 365 group. And here should be the untitled project. So let's create that one. Just going to dismiss this one. And now it is possible to look for project. And we're actually going to add that here. We're going to find that untitled project here. Use existing projects for this team. And now everyone within that team can use project right from Microsoft Teams. So sharing is a lot better and useful um, and more useful uh, doing it through Teams as long as it's all internal, obviously. If you need to share and interact with externals, you might want to use an Excel file because everyone has Excel. Not Still, not everyone has Microsoft Teams. Archiving purposes is a good one where it would be easy for you to store an Excel file and quick, quickly access that if needed. So that's the new export to Excel. And a couple of things strike me as being uh, logical next steps. So if you are able to export to Excel, it would also be nice to have an import from Excel. Then as I mentioned before, uh, the effort would be nice if we had that here. And um, what I'm missing is the custom fields. So currently it only takes the out of the box fields and yeah, that might not be enough. Bottom line, it's nice that we can export to Excel, but I would love to have more functionality added to the feature. If you agree with me, head on over to the user voice of Project for the Web and add your desired features. I've added a couple of user voice features myself regarding the export to Excel. So dive in there, give me your vote, and maybe we'll see a um, version two arise based on this initial export to Excel. And as mentioned at the beginning of this video, 
I'm going to increase my reports on project for the web improvements because they are coming and even at a near monthly basis. So project for the web is going to go places for sure. Have a look at the feature release playlist for new content of this sort, or maybe you would like to look into my Power BI videos more. And in that case, there's also a playlist on screen now. As always, I'd be very happy if you subscribe to the channel and click that like button. It helps the channel a lot and it lets me know if I helped you. That's it for now. Hope to welcome you back soon.